The 182 was in maintenance for quite a long time. I think close to two months now. Um, we had the, um, there, there was an AD coming out uh, requiring wing strut inspection on a lot of different Cessna models and ours was one of them. Uh, so they complied with the uh, wing strut inspection AD and put in a bunch of new stuff. Um, the JPI or JP Instruments Digital Engine Monitor and EDM 830, uh, they call it, what EDM stands for engine data management system, I believe. Anyway, so it's, in di it's a digital engine monitor that augments all your engine instruments. Uh, it has a, um, has a wide screen uh, displaying bar graphs for all the temperatures. So very, very helpful to monitor the engine health. To move on to our next aircraft, we would move on to a 6010 Foxtrot. Believe it or not, that is the aircraft. That's the paint job it used to have. I found this, I found this uh, photo on the internet when I just looked for our tail number. And it's like, oh, that's the paint job it originally had. Look at that. It also used to have uh, wheel pants on at some point, apparently. For that, for that extra one knot. Yeah, exactly. The wheel pants for, for the extra one knot. That's, that's <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the JP, uh, JP Instruments Engine Dig Digital Monitor 830. That is the new instrument that is in there. And it augments all analog engine instruments for manifold pressure, RPM, six EGT, so EGT per cylinder, six CHT, CHT for each cylinder, oil pressure and oil temperature. So there's a little quirk. I will get to that in a second. Uh, volts, so battery voltage. Um, by the way, our, the 182 has a 12 volt system. So when it's uh, running, um, Oh, excuse me, a 14 volt system with a 12 volt battery. So when it's running with the alternator working, you want to see 14 volts there. And it has a fuel flow and a fuel totalizer that talks back and forth to the GPS um, for allowing you fuel planning on long trips. The engine monitor has uh, some very cool functions. As I said, it has um, EGT and CHT indication per cylinder with configurable alerts. So it'll alert you to um, high cylinder head um, temperatures that are not good for engine long longevity. It has a lean assist function, which admittedly is of limited use in the 182 because the 182 is carburated. So um, you cannot run it lean off peak. Believe me, I have tried, it's not possible. Um, so, but you can, you can at least use the lean assist on the, on the rich side of peak to find uh, maximum power at altitude. Uh, it has a shock cooling warning and that is actually extremely useful because that is something um, that um, you need to uh, keep in mind when you're operating a high performance aircraft that has cowl flaps, um, that you want to make sure the cowl flaps are closed for um, cruise and descent and that you don't make an uh, abrupt uh, power reduction in descent uh, and rather a nice smooth power reduction over several minutes. So with operating a bigger and higher performance aircraft like the 182 comes uh, more planning. So it's considered poor technique to arrive at your destination after a five hour flight and then be like, oh, there's the airport, cut the power, nose down, dive. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's not how we do it. Um, so the uh, engine uh, monitor is, is configured to um, show you the, the cooling rate and issue a, a warning um, if the cooling rate exists uh, 50 degrees per minute. Um, and it really just comes with smooth operation. So make sure the cowl flaps are, are closed for descent and uh, don't yank the power out all at once. Instead, make a gradual reduction from 23 to 20 inches wait a few minutes, a few minutes later, down from 20 to 17 inches, and you'll be perfectly fine. Um, the endurance and fuel remaining is super useful because it talks back and forth to the GPS. So if you have a, a destination in the GPS, like your airport that you're going to, that's four hours or 500 miles away, um, the uh, engine monitor will tell you, okay, with the current fuel burn, you're going to arrive at your destination with 34.5 gallons remaining in the tanks. And that is useful information because it, it allows you to do planning for your stop. Like, hmm, am I landing at the big airport and get fuel from Signature? 
uh, at, I don't know, seven bucks a gallon or whatever they are charging? Or do I land somewhere in between and fill up and then just get the minimum fuel requirement on the signature ramp for them to waive the fees? Well, it, it allows you to do some, to do some, some trip planning, that, that is useful. Um, and finally, it has a data logging function. It has a USB port. So uh, throughout your flight, every five seconds, it takes a snapshot of all the data, all the temperatures, all the uh, pressures. Uh, so if at the end of the flight, you say, you know what, at three hours into the flight, I had this really, really uh, strange occurrence where, where something really didn't work well, or I had a runaway temperature or whatever, uh, we can, if you tell us, like on this flight, on this day, at this time, uh, we can plug a USB pen into the engine monitor, download the data for, um, uh, for that day, um, and um, extract it as a CSV format. And um, if a mechanic knows uh, uh, what to do with that, there's actually a, a, a website, a, a web service that uh, allows you to upload engine monitor data. And then you can look at it yourself and troubleshoot yourself, or you can pay, uh, you can pay a, a data analysis service um, to look at the logs for you and, and figure out what's going wrong. Um, so, so there are ways that the data logging can help us uh, with, uh, with troubleshooting. So if like one plug is bad or one exhaust valve is going bad, um, just, just looking, at the, um, looking at the engine monitor logs uh, will help us discover what is wrong, hopefully sooner, maybe even before it becomes a problem. Uh, but, but ideally, uh, the idea is by, by looking at the data first, you bring the plane into maintenance and then tell the mechanic, hey, you need to look at cylinder four bottom plug instead of bringing the plane to, to maintenance and be like, meh, it doesn't work, fix it. So um, that is, that is uh, the data logging feature is just extremely helpful to get, uh, get the mechanic focused on the right problem and, and, and help with maintenance issues. How long does it buffer? Like how long is it a month or 10 flights or? I mean... That's a good question. I, I don't know how many megabytes of internal capacity it has. Mm. So it, 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 is, it, it is probably a couple of days worth. So even if you mm. don't get to it like right after the flight, it, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, so no, I, I have no idea how many megabytes or, or, or gigabytes the, the internal capacity is. I don't know. So the engine monitor operation. Basically, if I explain this to the uh, person who has never never flown with, with the EDM before, I say it has two buttons. The next button and uh, the other button. So the next button is, uh, it's actually labeled step, but it, its function is yes, next, do it, go away. So this is the button that you will need 99% of the time because it goes to the next function, it steps to the next value. Uh, it, it, uh, on, on startup, it acknowledges that you want to start. And if there's a warning and you want to get rid of the warning and then see, instead see the other values, it makes the warning go away. So that's the button you need 99% of the time, the next button. And the other button is when you want to change something. So they are, they are labeled step and lean find, uh, and the step button is, is, is the one that just goes to the next menu. Uh, and, and the lean find button is, is the one that you use to change something. All right, I have a video from the manufacturer um, that I'm just going to play now and I'm going to uh, yeah, stop when, um, when I need to refer to the operation in our specific aircraft. Uh, oh, yeah, there's one quirk in the installation in our aircraft that I found is a little weird, but if you know that it's happening, um, in that our oil temperature probe is located behind the oil cooler. I'm not quite sure why they did it. Um, I, I, I think it, this is also an FAA requirement. Uh, unfortunately, they don't allow us to, to pull the old um, engine instruments, so we could not pull out the old oil pressure and oil temperature gauges and the old CHD gauges and completely replace them uh, with the EDM. So they had to keep the old uh, oil temperature probe where it was and, in, and, and install an additional one for the electronic instrument. And the problem with the new oil temperature probe being behind the oil cooler 
is that it doesn't see anything until the um, uh, until the the, uh, the thermostat valve opens up and actually lets oil to the oil cooler. So the way you notice that is it is a bit annoying to monitor on warm up because you start up the engine, everything's cold, the oil temperature reads, I don't know, 50, 60 degrees, you get the red warning that the oil temperature is low. And then you sit there running it up and running it up and it doesn't get warm. Nothing happens. Like, why is the oil not getting warm? And then all of a sudden goes, bam, 80 degrees, 90 degrees, 100 degrees, 110, 120, 125, 130, and then we're there. And what happened there is that the, the, the thermostat valve allowed the, the oil to go into the oil cooler now, and it flushed, uh, it, uh, it, it now actually put the oil cooler into the oil system where previously it had bypassed it. And, and only then, when you actually have oil going through there, it hits the new probe. Um, and, and, and that's why you see this little bit of, of strange behavior on startup. So if you do everything right, uh, you want to see the oil temperature go crazy just as you like get ready for takeoff, because that's how you know that everything is nice and warm um, and, and you can safely extract full power from the engine. So until you have seen the oil temperature make this, make this sudden jump uh, on the warm up, um, do not apply full power to the engine. It's just not good. It's just not good for, for an engine longevity to, to, to run an engine at maximum power uh, when the oil is not warm yet. All right, now for the, now for the video that I wanted to show. Uh, you need to look a little bit past their, their marketing speech. So the video st obviously starts out with how great this unit is, but we will, they will get into the actual operation of, of the unit pretty soon. The new EDM 730 or 830 series engine data management system is a full color evolution of the legendary 700-800 series. With easy to read seven segment characters and a bright daylight display, you can place your so this is how it is installed um, in our 182. Um, the buttons are on the left side, so the unit can be installed buttons up, buttons down, buttons right, whatever. So this picture actually reflects uh, exactly how it is installed in, in, in our aircraft. Um, I told you about the button that is just for next function. That's the one down here. Uh, and the button to change something, that's uh, the button up here. So. 90% of the operation, you will be pressing this button to get somewhere. Um, and this um, is pretty much exactly the screen layout that we have in, in the 182. You have the manifold pressure and the RPM on top. Um, then you have the bar graph display for the temperatures below. And of course, we don't have the bar for the turbocharger since the 182 isn't turbocharged. So that last segment is simply blank. It's simply not there on our aircraft. And then you have those, um, those uh, pointers over here for oil temperature with the quirk that I just mentioned, uh, oil pressure, fuel flow, fuel used, fuel remaining, fuel required. Um, I think this is temperature difference. Uh, I actually put the voltmeter there. So, and the outside air temperature. Uh, so yeah, in our installation, I think this one is actually the voltmeter. Um, yeah, and the bar graph display, uh, the blue ones display the EGT and the white ones display the CHT. And you never want to see one of the white ones turn red. Uh, please, for the sake of uh, preserving the engine, um, if, if you ever uh, see a CHT run red, uh, yeah, do something about it. Cow flaps open, reduce power, uh, start a descent. Uh, think of finding a place to land because you, if you ever see something like what does it say here 492 493 degrees this is horrible this is uh, four, uh, 500 uh, degrees Fahrenheit is enough to uh, irreparably destroy a cylinder if it gets that hot and it gets that out of shape um, so try at all times to keep uh, the cylinder temperature at 400 or below if you see 390 380 390 in climb that's fine if during climb, it climbs over 400, more cowl flaps, more airspeed, uh, more mixture, anything you can do, um, don't let the temperature creep over 400. Your attention to flying the aircraft, knowing you can quickly scan and correct engine problems as soon as they occur. The flexible screen display allows the new EDM 730 to fit in almost any aircraft panel. 
the 730 body is offset and can rotate to portrait and landscape views four different ways to accommodate the most tight-fitting panels. Change the orientation of the 730 display by holding down the white step button until you see an arrow. Tapping the black lean find button will turn the display. The 730 will then reboot with the new orientation. Additional new features include lean of peak default on. So whenever you use lean find mode, you can choose between rich of peak or lean of peak as your default startup setting. Well, obviously our default startup setting in the 182 is rich of peak because lean of peak simply doesn't work with a carbureted engine. To further customize your JPI, we now have user programmable gauges. So you can decide which mini gauges you would like to have displayed and in what order. The EDM 730 from JPI is the most advanced and accurate engine monitoring instrument available, offering the highest level of safety and reliability. With the EDM 730 acting as a flight engineer, you can enjoy improved fuel economy, reduced maintenance costs, and extended engine life. JPI is a leader in precision aircraft engine performance monitoring. When you fly your piston aircraft, only a small percentage of combustion energy actually moves the piston to produce engine power. Most energy passes into the exhaust pipe as very hot gases. Monitoring the temperature with your EDM will indicate the quality of the combustion process and allow you to troubleshoot potential engine problems quickly. Let's learn about the features and operation of the EDM 730 and 830, including the Lean of Peak or LOP feature that can save you money on every flight. As your built-in flight engineer, the EDM is constantly redline checking all critical engine parameters while you concentrate on flying the aircraft. With the 730, you can make an entire flight without ever pushing a button or view every critical piece of engine data individually. Your EDM 730 will be monitoring your engine and will warn you instantly if any parameter exceeds the program. So yeah, when, when a temperature goes out of limits or the oil pressure gets low or the voltage gets low or um, your fuel remaining goes below, I think, I don't, I think we programmed it at 15 gallons, I think, uh, maybe 10, maybe 15, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, you get the, the flashing red display and um, I wish it also made a sound, but um, no, you get the, the, the flashing red display and um, it stops cycling here through the parameters and, 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 and only displays the one that has a warning. And remember what I told you, there's the button to say next, go away. Uh, press, the, press the step button here to see, okay, I've seen the warning. Now continue, uh, continue cycling, cycling the other parameters. So uh, this is how you cancel a warning, hopefully do something about it or, or decide what you want to do about it. In case of 10 gallons remaining, probably think about finding a place to land. Uh, yeah, so warning shows up here, stops displaying the other parameters down here. And if you want to acknowledge it, uh, the, the step button is how you do that. And limit. The EDM 730 and 830 work exactly like the EDM 700-800 series, except for a larger display, color, and richer screen detail. Let's have a quick look at the key features. The EDM 730 collects data and displays it for you in a useful way. All functions are accessed by pushing or holding the white step button or the black lean find button, or the two together. Generally, the black lean find button changes data and the white step button moves you to the next item or scan. As you change screen orientation of the 730, you will notice the white and black buttons will switch positions, which is easily accomplished by carefully popping the buttons off and switching their respective positions. At the top of the display, the EDM 830 depicts both RPM and manifold pressure graphically and digitally. Percent horsepower is located in this display area also. Let's view the blue. Uh, very important remark here. 
this percent horsepower display is purely calculated based on uh, manifold pressure and RPM. Uh, it does not take into account whether your engine is actually making power. So if you pull the mixture out way back uh, where the engine just stumbles and coughs and produces no usable power, but the RPM stays where it's at because we have a constant speed prop and the manifold pressure didn't change because you didn't move the throttle, uh, this display will still say you're making 70% power or 65% power or whatever. Uh, even though you might be making no power at all because you've pulled the mixture way out. So just to, uh, a thing to remember, um, this is not magic. This is simply a giant table that the uh, EDM has internally and that it can go to and say, okay, with this outside air temperature, so it's connected to an outside air temperature sensor and this pressure and this RPM, I should be making this many percent of power. Whether you're actually making that percent of power um, uh, is, is still a function of mixture. So that's um, just a thing to remember about, about this display. Let's view the blue bar graph or EGT, bar graph presentation. The height of each column represents EGT. The last pale blue column represents turbine inlet temperature. The range of the EGT columns is red line at the top down to one half of red line at the bottom. This um, actually, we don't have an EGT red line on our engine. Absolute EGT is uh, pretty, pretty meaningless. Um, absolute EGT is only something you care for in a turbocharged engine because um, turbine inlet temperature uh, always does have a red line. You don't want to um, run the turbocharger too hot. Uh, but since we are not turboed and we just uh, uh, throw all the exhaust um, overboard, there is no hard red line for EGT per se. Um, and what we are mostly concerned with is uh, relative EGT or, or P, uh, uh, EGT relative, relative to peak temperature. Um, so the only thing that really has a red line on our engine is the CHT. And it's arguably the most important red line there is. Uh, because running high EGT can eventually, I guess, burn through the exhaust manifold, um, but um, high CHT can actually destroy a cylinder. So this is the much more important red line you, you, want, to, you want to be aware of. This is called the percentage view because you are looking at a percentage of red line. You can also normalize the display to view small variations by holding the black lean find button down for three seconds. And that is what you do for the mag check. So um, it's not on the checklist, but it should be part of your run-up procedure now. Uh, remember, I just explained that you want to see a good EGT rise during the mag check. On a single mag, all EGTs should come up. Back on both, all EGTs should come down. And with the normalized view, this becomes really obvious. So the procedure for run-up is, as you've seen here, hold the button down for three seconds. The, the change button, the, the lean find button, hold the change button, the lean find button down for, for, for three seconds. Then you get all um, EGTs uh, centered in the center of the screen and then switch to left mag and all blue bars should come up. If one blue bar does not come up, you have a bad plug. Bring it back to both, all blue bars come back down. Perfect, switch to right mag all blue bars should be coming up. If one doesn't come up, we have a problem. Back to both, all blue bars come back down and uh, then hold the button again for three seconds to restore normal view. So normalized view is super helpful for the mag check on run up. It's by holding the black lean find button down for three seconds. A one bar change in column height represents a 10 degree change. The normalized view permits rapid visualization of EGT trends rather than a percentage of red line. Hold the black lean find button to return to percentage view again. To the right of the EGT display bar is a white bar graph showing the cylinder head temperature. Any bar graph that exceeds program limits will flash and change color from yellow to red. The exceeding limit will be displayed below in the numerical display. The cylinder numbers are at the bottom of each column. A square box around the number will indicate 
That cylinder is currently also in the large numerical display. Above each column is a number in blue showing the exact EGT and white showing the CHT. If turbine inlet temperature is installed, then the right most... Um, again, turbine inlet temperature is not something we have. The absolute EGT number is not very interesting. So whether it reads 1400 on one cylinder and 1500 on the other cylinder, um, the absolute number is uh, um, not limiting. So really the most important number you're looking here is, is, is the CHT number. And if you see something like this in a climb, 376, 382, 379 in climb, perfect, <laughs> keep it there. Um, if it goes up to 400, do something about it. This column will indicate this with a T below that column. Your EDM gives you a large numerical scanner information area that shows individual cylinder information at a scan rate you choose. Alarming items in lean find mode will temporarily interrupt the scan. When an alarm is displayed, tapping the step button will temporarily disable the alarm digital indication for the next 10 minutes. When an alarm is displayed, holding the step button until the word off appears will disable the alarm digital indication for the remainder of the flight. When the cylinder number is outlined, the bottom numerical display will show the EGT on the left four digits and the CHT on the right three digits. When TIT is displayed, the letters TIT are shown below the numerical display. Other items on the numerical display, depending on your options, are oil temperature, oil pressure, shock cooling amount, battery voltage, outside air temperature, difference between the hottest and coolest cylinder, RPM and MAP. With the fuel flow option, you also have remaining fuel on board, fuel required to destination, reserve fuel, miles per gallon, hours remaining, gallons per hour, and fuel used so far. The selector switch Okay, very important here to remember is that the engine monitor is not connected to uh, the fuel sensor, so to, to the fuel gauge. The engine monitor actually has no idea how much fuel is actually in the tanks. It relies on you initializing it at the start of the flight to uh, what you stick the tanks at. So normally when you start out at Sanford, the tanks should be full. So you initialize the uh, the, the engine monitor with, with full fuel. So it knows, okay, that's our baseline. We're starting out with full tanks. And then it keeps, uh, keeps track of the fuel flow, how, how much fuel went into the engine. And it subtracts that from your starting value. So this is actually a good backup to your um, fuel gauges because now you have two different ways that you know how much fuel is on board. You have the fuel gauge that monitors the level in the tank. And you have the fuel totalizer that uh, kept track of how much fuel went into the engine. So if you had a fuel leak, heaven forbid, and all the fuel leaked out of the wing tank into the air without going into the engine, the engine monitor would not see this because the fuel did not go into the engine. So the key thing here to keep in mind is do initialize the engine data monitor at the start of your flight to the fuel that is actually in the tanks. In the simplest case, you just say, yep, I start with full fuel, tanks are full, go. Um, if you uh, put in like a specific amount, if you, going back to my example, you are on the signature ramp, the fuel is seven bucks a gallon, and you just need 10 gallons for them to waive the ramp fee, and you order exactly 10 gallons, then you need to pay a little bit more attention when starting the uh, plane and then you need to tell the engine monitor, hey, I put exactly 10 gallons in. So we're starting with exactly 10 gallons more than where you stopped the last time instead of starting it with full tanks again. But so if you, if you keep in mind that you need to do this at the start of your flight, you have this great additional fuel gauge that is arguably more accurate than the, than the tank sensors, which just bounce all over the place, especially when it's turbulent. Um, 
And so it is a really helpful secondary fuel gauge, but it is not allowed to replace the primary fuel gauge because if there's a leak and the fuel leaks out of the wing, um, the engine monitor doesn't see it. Also, if you are, if you forget to initialize it at the start of the flight, the indication will be wrong. So keep that in mind. So far, the selector switch allows you to switch between numeric displays of engine parameters, fuel flow, or both. The linear gauges provide both digital and analog indications for various parameters. The sliding pointer and color range marks gives you a quick indication of where you are relative to the operating limits while the digital values provide precise information. Since the EDM 730-830 series features the ability to be mounted in either landscape or portrait orientation, the display layouts will differ. You can also customize the gauge positions, which we will discuss in the pilot programming chapter. One minute after the EDM is turned on, it will automatically start to index through all parameters. While in the scan mode, tapping the white step button will stop the automatic scan and take you into the manual indexing mode. Tapping the black button will enter lean find mode or change values when you're in programming mode. Holding both buttons down, will enter programming mode. To begin or resume automatic indexing, tap the black lean find button and then tap the white step button. All right, so this is basically everything you need to know, uh, need to know about those buttons. Um, I prefer to use um, the, uh, the little um, three position switch that you just saw. So that's on, um, on the bottom of the panel, there's, there's now a little switch that says uh, EGT all or fuel flow. And depending on what you're interested in, you flip it either to EGT or to fuel flow or, or to all. And whenever you flip the switch, it restarts the automatic indexing uh, of those parameters. If you need to look at something specific, you can use the step button and just keep stepping until you see the parameter that you want it. And um, to resume, what I do, I just flip the switch to EGT and back to all or to fuel flow and back to all and 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 then it goes back into into automatic indexing mode. All right. Um, yeah, that uh, uh, that's how you operate um, the EDM. the The second video I have here is about operating the um, uh, the lean find mode. Uh, we're not actually going to uh, view all of this video because half of it, uh, the lean of peak mode is, is not relevant to us because we cannot run the carbureted engine lean of peak. Um, so we'll just, uh, we'll just stop it when it stops making sense for us. Yeah, that's the next video. Accurate leaning yields optimal engine temperatures. Using your EDM to precisely adjust the mixture, your engine can produce the best fuel economy or maximum power. Proper leaning technique can seem confusing at first, but will become second nature with a little flight time and practice. Most of us were taught the rich of peak method for proper leaning. More recently, with expensive fuel costs and the precise information your EDM gives you, lean of peak, or LOP, is becoming more common. We'll start with the traditional rich of peak method. Upon reaching cruise configuration, lean using the lean find mode to identify the first cylinder to reach peak EGT. Begin the leaning process by pre-leaning the mixture to about 50 degrees below the estimated peak in any one of the cylinders. To enter lean find mode, tap the black lean find button. The scan will stop. The display will briefly say lean R for rich of peak you will see the exhaust gas temperature of the hottest cylinder displayed. Slowly lean the mixture of the engine at a rate of about five degrees per second continuously. The lean fine will become active for the hottest cylinder indicated by the flashing cylinder number on the bottom. If you have the fuel flow option, the fuel flow rate will be shown on the numeric display. Stop leaning when the blue EGT column begins flashing. You will see leanest on the display, followed by the value of the exhaust gas temperature of the first cylinder to peak. In most cases, you will now be a little on the lean side of peak, 
usually by about 10 degrees. While the column is flashing, slowly enrich the mixture. Go past peak and lower. Stop enriching at the desired exhaust gas temperature, usually about 20 degrees rich of peak for best economy. All right, so this is the traditional rich of peak method, the only method available to us uh, with the carbureted engine. And I just want to remind you that you only do this above at least 3000 feet. You don't mess around with that at sea level and not at full power because running at 20 degrees rich of peak at sea level with 100% power will uh, eventually cause uh, detonation, uh, will drive the CHTs up is very bad. So you want to be at cruise altitude and cruise power before you start messing with that. 